Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. It seems everywhere I look at the moment, I see people claiming to be an expert, specialist, ninja or guru in their chosen field. But when you scratch beneath the surface, you often find that that social media expert actually has 38 Twitter followers. But I guess we've always had people trying to blag their way through life and think that if they write something down, it becomes factual. And for the most part, it's completely harmless. But today's guest contacted me because he felt passionately and wanted to set the record straight by writing a few wrongs and talk about why we all need to take identity management and synthetic identity seriously, especially as businesses begin adding biometric security such as facial recognition. He believes it's opening up a lot of dangers that people just cannot see at the moment. So what did I say? Of course, I said I need to get you on the podcast because that is exactly what this show is all about. So today I invite you to buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to South Africa so we can find out more about identity management and synthetic identities and the hidden dangers. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Hi to all the listeners. Yeah, what I do currently is I've been involved with identity management um, for the last, say, about 10 years in things. And prior to that, it all started in about 30 years ago when I was a, a young policeman in the South African Police Force. And um, I was trained in um, fingerprints firstly and then later in forensic uh, field work. So I became a, f- a fingerprint expert with um, I did the crime scenes and all that. That was my uh, speciality. Moved on from there into other uh, entities, started looking into electronic management of records and all that. And... I think um, my, my forte stayed with the fingerprint parts and the forensic part. And then I started to look into um, identities. How do you protect an identity? How do you verify or authenticate the identity? And the focus moved into uh, electronic fingerprints, which is the algorithms, uh, which I uh, were found to be not as good, neither the devices. But after about five, six years of study, I found the right devices and the right software and with that, we combined the forensic part of it, and we basically bridged between we bridged the difference between all the two factors from forensics with electronics, and that's where I believe true identity management started to be. It all sounds incredibly exciting receiving that intensive training in the South African Police Service as a fingerprint expert and crime scene for us, forensic investigator. Do I take it when you watch programs like CSI, you must get really frustrated with a lot of the. Uh, misinformation that comes through on on uh, subjects like this, especially when you know it inside out. Um, yeah, it's sometimes I mean, like, um, but they do they do show a lot of stuff uh, that's really good. But they solve the crime scene from a crime scene to putting the person in custody within twenty four hours, and it's not always like that. <laughs> you don't find that amount of uh, um, evidence on a crime scene. You've got to go look hard for it. You've got to be the the criminal act him out and then understand it it's a it's a thing that grows on you and you learn in whatever you do in those crime scenes to understand it better and yes they do make mistakes i mean i've, I've actually t- recorded a photo where they had two fingerprints the one is a wall and the one is a loop and they said 100 percent match on their AFIS automatic fingerprint identification system so yeah there's mistakes for sure now, at the end of every podcast episode, I always encourage people listening to contact me directly and actually share their expertise, and if, especially if they want to set the record straight or bust a few myths. And you did just that, and I thank you for doing that. And after chatting across a few emails, uh, we have got to know each other a little bit over the last couple of weeks. But for people listening, can you tell me a little bit more how in the last couple of years, you've actually noticed a magnitude of people getting on the identity management bandwagon but without any knowledge around reading fingerprints biometrics etc I mean, can you expand on that i think if you look at it to to, to get trained as a, a fingerprint expert it takes you about six seven years because it's a real science um, you don't go there into that field 
because it's called dactyloscopy. That's what the, the name is of that field. So it's a, and that it's intense. You and you've got to understand that there's a not one fingerprint that matches another one. Many people have said yes, no, that's not something that can be proven. But I believe that over a three four hundred year period, you will not find the same fingerprint again. So that's one of the parts. And a lot of people have started to challenge that and think they know about fingerprints. I would say if you're not in that field of study or not have been uh, uh, doing any field work or studies or real intense research regarding, don't play stuff. I've seen people that uh, wrote white papers or articles, and these are guys that's got PhDs and they work at universities that even placed an article that they said they've created a deep fake of a fingerprint. Now, the deep fake of the fingerprint that they created is not even found on a human being. It's something that's not even really uh, closely assimilating a fingerprint. But they also talk about that one part that I understand. They said that this was done to deep fake any of these devices, the mobile devices that's got these fingerprint scanners on. I think those fingerprint scanners are actually just gimmicks in essence. Um, so they placed stuff there which they've researched without even uh, utilizing a fingerprint expert. They've done it through their intense knowledge of their field of studies, electronics or whatever. Even people that attacks the biometrics and says, this is not the right thing to do, they can spoof it. Yes, um, you can spoof it, but how? That's my question that I put to everybody, but they can't come back and give me a even a reasonable answer as to how they will spoof fingerprints. I'm talking specifically about fingerprints when I'm referring to what I'm talking about. And none of them can actually tell me how they will spoof it and how they will then utilize it on what. Because you've got to have interaction with the person that you're spoofing. That's the main important thing. So that's some of the stuff. And I don't get reasonable or good answers from these guys. It does seem that we're living in an age where everyone seems to think that if they say something often enough, let's say they're an expert in something, if they say that enough times and put it on all their profiles, it actually becomes true after a while. And I've seen that many Instagram experts with 32 followers that kind of highlight that point. <laughs> so in yeah, your true. world, though, what are the biggest mistakes or inaccurate data that you've been seeing reporting, especially around that world of identity management? Um, yeah, one of the things that um, there's a big hype about is obviously facial recognition. I can see it in that part. Now I'm not talking about the fingerprint part. Um, and, and there's suddenly a huge amount of guys or institutions trying to fake uh, facial identification. And I'll tell you, uh, um, the AI regarding that is really getting better and better, that you can spoof with your facial recognition. And um, although facial recognition is very, very... Uh, promising, it will lead to something really good. But the, the, the how better those guys get with the facial recognition software, how better the criminals are also getting with it. So it's a threat there. That's one of the threats. Voice biometrics, similar to that. Um, if you've got a cough, if you're not feeling well, if you've had a couple too many last night, your voice is not exactly the same as what you recorded. So trust on voice biometrics, also a bit flimsy. But I think the most important factor that everybody must understand is your identity is proof that there exists evidence that there is a real world human being connected to. That's what your identity is. And evidence is only allowed, or let's put it this way, the only evidence allowed for in a court case, for instance, that it can stand on its own is fingerprints and DNA. The others or risky. That's what I, I, I look at it from a forensic aspect as well. But you are someone that's been taking identity management very seriously and with many years of experience as the fingerprint expert, forensic knowledge and studies around uh, regarding human identity. So you know your stuff inside out. So can you tell me a little bit more about how you've noticed that, that many institutions are not seeing what the real threat is? It's almost like they can't see it. And maybe set the scene by highlighting the dangers of something that I read that you talk about a lot, which is synthetic identities. I mean, can you talk about that for me? I think um, most institutions are not recognizing the threat that's on its way. I'll call it the tsunami of synthetic identities. The problem with that is that you will... Well, this is what's happening. If you look at just the hacking and the, the data that's being exploited the last couple of months, it's increased by 10 folds from last year. You've had about 10, 000, 10 uh, million breaches the last couple of months. 
And that's a huge problem because those guys that's breaching it is using that eye, those information, that personal information with the people, mixing and matching it, and then they are creating a synthetic identity out of that. So it's somebody that does not exist. It's never breathed on the planet of Earth or never walked on planet Earth. It's totally something that does not exist, but it does exist in uh, electronic format. So what they do, and this is what the criminal syndicates is doing big time, and you can uh, actually reference one of the Russian sites where I, was, I saw that it's already starting to happen. Um, they take this information, this personal information, mix and match it, then they take a face, there's even software or faces that does not even exist. So you've got something that's got a face, got information, got an identity created out of all this mix and matches, and then they create this identity on a platform, any identity management platform that allows for self-registration and especially for the facial recognition as the, the first layer of uh, protection because they believe that facial recognition is uh, um, such a high level of quality and assurance for them. And what the, the criminal syndicates do is once that identity has been registered there, they apply for a loan at one of the banks that allows for, for you to use that uh, um, platform to, to register and, and create a bank account. Create a bank account, and then they apply for a loan, not a big loan. Let's say in, in US, maybe $200. The bank sends that application through to the credit unions, and they then decline it at the credit unions because there's no profile. They send it back to the bank. But at the credit union, that profile, that synthetic identity's profile, is then created. So it's sent back to the bank, and you don't get your loan, or that synthetic identity doesn't get the loan. Now they wait a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, and then they apply again for the loan. And this time it's granted because there is a credit profile which is clean. They grant the loan, and from there on, uh, the, the synthetic identity is nurtured. Two hundred dollars now they paid off within six months. Um, take a loan for thousand bucks up to ten thousand, and then maybe hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand US. But the problem lies in this: it's not one synthetic identity that will, at the end of the day, do this loan. It might be five hundred thousand taking out a loan at the bank for hundred thousand US dollars, and they just disappear with the money. There's no trace, there's nothing regarding that synthetic identity, and no bank will be able to stand after that. They will obviously be the fool. So in your experience, what do you think are the biggest identity management threats that listeners, who could be individuals like me and you, or they could just be uh, in charge of a big business, what kind of threats or identity management threats should they be aware of right now? I think for the business owners, exactly the synthetic identity I just ex, uh, explained. Yeah. But personal, for your personal account, yes. Obviously, they are trying to um, still find the right targets. They want to find the, the one that's got money in it. And if you're in a wealthy situation, best get the best identity management solution in place or ask your institution that you want something that really protects your identity and that when you um, do a transaction, especially if you're in the wealthy sector, that you've got a specific device that does a multi-factor authentication, match your fingerprints, and even uh, non-data factors that you can use, which is also available. So the combination of that to create a total sure uh, multi-factor authentication is not just a PIN number and an ID number or something like an identity number. It's much more than that. And that's where the protection for your identity is very crucial. Uh, just on that subject, um, if you look at all the advice that's given from every uh, bank or credit union that they say, uh, check your credit rating or check your credit uh, score, whatever there is, that's from that they do. As soon as something is there that shouldn't be there, it's too late. Your identity has been stolen and used. So that's actually valueless. If they say, don't throw away your uh, uh, pay slips or whatever, that's, it's already too late. Everything that you have is already on the, on the web. It's there. Everybody's stuff is there. It's just how they utilize it to either defraud you or defraud the institution. But I think the defrauding of the institutions is going to have a much bigger effect out of all these hacking and um, our data that's being be, be, is available at the moment. And like you said, there are so many threats there and they're increasing at a rapid rate. So how should everyone, including businesses, protect their identity a little bit better? Because there, like you said, there are identity management solutions out there, but it's a very crowded market. It's hard to know what's good and what's bad or, or what's fit for purpose. Who doesn't really know what they're talking about? So how can people and businesses better protect their identity, in your opinion? 
So the, the, the best way to protect it is to, obviously, like we protect a person's identity and also ensures that there's no synthetic identities on our solution, is that the individual has to be registered with their fingerprints at school. The fingerprints has to be placed in front of somebody or with a, uh, you've got to be registered in front of somebody that's eligible to open up the system. This means that you've got forensic protocol of the collection of the evidence of the identity. And this is where it starts. If the onboarding is not done with this or this method, you're not going to collect the real identity of that person. And that's where the synthetic identities is then being collected or created. So you've got to have, for minimum reasons, um, registration or onboarding onto a system in front of somebody else. It has to be done with all the biometrics that's available. Obviously, fingerprints, facial, and I would suggest iris. Voice and the rest is, is not as good. So the face is for easy verification. The, the solution like ours must have a forensic platform with a forensic chain of custody from where the person was registered into the system. And then there's going to be a forensic platform that can verify that those fingerprints, if there's any query, is 100%. So you have a, a, a onboarding into your IFIS system, that's your automatic fingerprint identification system, we chose one of the top three in the world because it was a hard search. On the onboarding side, your devices, and this is also something that's very important, the biometric device must give the best image that there is, the best quality image. Also very important to have that. And then your forensic part, obviously you have to have fingerprint experts on that side to testify if necessary, if that is a person who is on the system. And then everything has got to come to a solution or to, to the system where you've got a verified trust exchange. So anytime that you talk to your bank or your bank calls you, you have to verify yourself continuously, but the bank does not do that back to you. So very verify trust exchange, both employee of the bank or representative and you as both be on the same system so that you can do that interaction through this platform. And that's very important because a lot of companies are just checking who you are, asking you questions regarding your identity or bank account number, they've got that information. They must only be able to verify that you are you and you that you are talking to the right individual. And that's that's the most, very most uh, important part for any solution. You have to do a forensic protocol of enrolling anybody onto the system. And so to be the boring IT guy here, but could yourself, your company, or any identity management solution, could they actually become a target as well with attackers just wanting to get to your databases and steal that biometric data? What measures do you have to take to ensure that that doesn't happen too? Yes, that's obviously the hackers are looking at any type of opening to collect information. Yeah. Uh, apart from the fingerprints, if they collect the fingerprints on the one side of the AFIS, that's all algorithms. So you, you, you're collecting nothing. It's ones and zeros. Yeah. Going to the fingerprints that's on the system, the physical fingerprints and the raw data that's stored on a very high secure level and even on un, uh, uh, non-internet connected servers. So that's a, a method of redundancy as well as security. Um, we've employed the highest level of security throughout. You can't just um, go onto the system. You've got to go through your AOF and all that stuff that's the tech guys done, the IT guys. And it's a closed system. It's not something that is open because of this, uh, the problem. Any system that's open is, is always open for, for hacking. So we've closed it, used the best tech, used the best um, security levels. And even if um, penetrated, obviously the security lies in the back end. And all, what we all also do is when we go into a platform with a verified trust exchange, that is not connected to any of the biometric systems. This is a system on its own. So any intrusion can only come up to there. It can't go back to the whole uh, uh, engine of the whole solution. And that is how we provided security. So we've worked on this. It's not something that we've created over the last year. It's been in, it's been in design for the last seven years. And um, it's continuously looking into the security of it. Um, yeah, that's the main thing about it. And we'll have people listening to our conversation today in 165 different countries. So for everyone listening, wherever they are in the world, what is the key message you'd like them to walk away with today? And the next time that they read one of those articles about identity management, what would you like to, what would you expect them to, uh, when they read that article, how would you, ex what would you expect them to question in the article and not just believe everything that they read? Um, there's two sides. The one side is totally 
negative regarding the whole identity thing. For them, I would say those guys that's uh, publishing anything, ask them about their credentials in the identity management sphere. Have they really researched identity management or are they playing around with biometrics, with systems, devices? Because those three is just part and parcel of the thing. The whole thing is about processes. Where's the processes? That's important. So for the guys publishing a lot of articles or anything, they've got to be tested with what they're saying. That's the one part. On the other part, people that are selling products, how come you, the first question on that is, can you state that there's not one synthetic identity on your system? That's the most important thing. Because if there's one synthetic identity on a system, there can be millions. And that's the biggest problem that's going to hit the world. And even if you're protecting your identity on it, how will they be able to prove that you are you when it's in a discrepancy? Is there real proof regarding that? Is there any duplication of me? Um, yeah, that's one of the most important things, the two questions. Uh, do you have any synthetic identities on your system? If they state they haven't, it's got to be checked. And the other part, if somebody says this is how it is, they've got to be their credentials checked and the information also buried. So much valuable information there. And before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today about the road ahead for identity management? Well, with the road of um, identity management, obviously there's huge um, stuff happening. Currently, it's growing at a, a rapid rate, and it's been intertwined with um, cybersecurity. I think if you look at the core of cybersecurity problems, it is the people that's act- that has access to the system or that might be uh, um, working on a system as a contractor or that. So many of the stuff that starts with cybersecurity is actually born in the identity management. I think that the people outside, especially institutions, must start taking real or must understand that true identity management is not a game. This is something that's really serious. Uh, Looking at the growth into the blockchain and the idea that identities must be on a blockchain is very critical as well. You are one person on earth. You can only have one digital twin. If you've got more than that, that system is a flaw. So what it says is you've got to... Uh, true identity management is where you have one single existing real-world human being which is linked with forensic proof to one single digital twin in the cyber world. And this is where it's a critical flaw in many systems because they believe that a digital identity or person can have various digital identities. That's the thing. You've only got 7 billion people on Earth. You can't sit with 80 billion, uh, 100 billion digital identities or self, self-sovereign self identities. It's got to be one-on-one. Right ahead for our company, we are busy uh, engaging with um, uh, forensic companies in, in Brazil, IEIF, and we are busy um, working with them to create something much better uh, in Brazil as well. So I'm just giving you some lightweight headway on what we, we're going with our, our solution. And for anybody that would like to carry on the conversation that we started today with you, can you just remind them of where they can connect with you personally and also the name of your business and the website where they might be able to just find out a little bit more information on all the topics we've covered today? Um, yeah, we, it's easiest way to contact us is obviously, firstly, the company's name is Diverse Authentication Library or DAL, D-A-L, uh, hyphen global, DAL global. Uh, my email address is david, D-A-W-I-D, dot J, at dal, D-A-L, hyphen global, G-L-O-B-A-L, dot C-O dot Z-A. Um, even as we, our website is um, www.dal, hyphen global, dot C-O dot Z-A. Excellent. Well, I'll add the links to your website over on my web, uh, over on the blog post that will accompany this episode at techblogwriter.co.uk. And uh, so hopefully people will reach out to you and we can bust a few more of those myths. So a big thank you, though, for coming on and joining me today. I think there's so much valuable information that you've passed on to the global community. And I think everyone should start to take their identity management a little bit more seriously. But thanks again for coming on today. Thanks. Thanks for you, Neil. Really appreciate it. I love how this show has listeners in 165 countries, but more than anything, how anyone in any of those countries has a platform where they can come on here and talk passionately and share their expertise and their insights. That's how we all learn from each other 
and why I created this podcast. Anybody that watches the news night after night, you kind of soak up everything that you're told and treat it as factual. But have you ever noticed that when that same news program talks about something that you know inside out and you know passionately, you quickly realise how those reporters often know very little about that topic. Sometimes it can make you question absolutely everything. So if you have any expertise in identity management or synthetic identities, and you'd like to join the debate that we started today, or equally, if you'd like to share your expertise on another topic, the doors to this podcast are open to each and every one of you. We are booked up till the end of November at the moment. So if you are interested in coming on this year, please let me know sooner rather than later. So email me techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. And equally, if you just want to send me your thoughts or a quick comment, please do that too. I think we covered a lot of ground today. It was incredibly interesting. And I could carry on talking about it for another hour, but I'm afraid we're out of time. I do invade far too much of your personal space as it is. So I'm going to make my excuses and get out of here and return tomorrow with another guest. So thanks for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.